It was April 1994, and the U.S. Embassy said we had no choice. We had to evacuate our family. But we weren't allowed to bring any Rwandan friends who had become like family. And so there was just no way we could leave them there knowing they'd be killed. Teresa ended up taking our kids to safety, and I stayed to try to work with Rwandan colleagues and help. About eight weeks into the Rwandan genocide against the Tutsi, we learned that Trifine, the orphanage nurse, had been killed. Oh, I remember I was, I was so angry and then so discouraged. I mean, what were we supposed to, how could we go on? What, what's the right thing to do in these impossible situations? It's really been in the years since the genocide that the real heart of the people of Rwanda has been discovered. And that question about the right thing to do in impossible situations, well, it's in Rwanda that I learned, started learning about restorative practices. It's in Rwanda where I've seen the government build structure and programs where people could reinvent themselves and actually begin to believe that we're more than the worst thing that we've done. You know, every day there's so many opportunities to reframe challenging situations or people. I mean, like when my old pathways of blame get fired in my head, I love finding strategies to replace, to build new pathways of compassionate curiosity to help prune back those pathways of blame. I'm really looking forward to connecting with you and exploring how restorative practices lead to trusting relationships and the best version of ourselves. Thanks.